Shintoism. It is at the heart of all things in Japan. The reason why Japanese people are said to be polite is because Shinto mannerisms have been interwoven over countless centuries from the ancient times to the present day. It is said that most of the modern practices such as karate, matcha tea making, and even to bowing on an everyday basis, is stem from the ideologies of Shintoism. Being a kanushi or Shinto priest takes years of dedication, practice and understanding, but the result of seeing such rituals take place by such a few and dedicated it's sight of need. Prior to my participation, it is rare for a foreigner to take part in this ritual and is generally disallowed. And for this, the burden and hidden opportunity for me to show you this has increased threefold. This is a letter from the Shrine Headmaster. Um, one of the, uh, it's the Kumano Hayatama Taisha, which is the uh, one of the three major shrines of the Kumano called the Pilgrimage. It essentially reads, Please be aware that Shinto ceremonies are divine and not just anyone can do. Essentially, those who have not acquired the qualifications of the Shinto priesthood are not allowed to perform these rituals in public. Um, with that being said though, I'm, I'm absolutely grateful for the fact that we are able to participate in coming here today and um, experiencing what it's like to be, uh, to be a shrine priest. And it's something that I'm going to hold with an utmost respect and hopefully show everyone um, a glimpse of what it's like to come into the secret world that we see as often as tourists. So come and follow us. Enter the world of mystical now. It's going to be spooky. Hayatama Taisha is one of the grand three shrines in the Kumano Kodo pilgrimage and is nestled in the city center of Shingu a town approximately two to three hours by train from Nagoya or Osaka. Many of the Shinto shrines, you most likely be welcomed at the gate by this massive interwoven rope structure known as the Shimanawa, which is said to repel all evil influences from entering. Before we enter any temple grounds, a strict regimen to purify ourselves must be adhered to, including the washing of both hands, the rinsing of the mouth, so we can enter the temple with open minds and open hearts. The iconic sounding of the taiko drum to awaken the spirits and to ready the gods of our arrival. When coming to Japan, the first thing you'll notice is the interior of the shrine that you're visiting, known as the Haidang or Chudeng. It serves as a place to conduct rituals. For us extensively, the ritual that we're being witness to is a ritual to increase our good spirits, rid us of any thoughts of bad doings should they exist, and to ready myself into the task of sharing my heart into the world peace prayers. The color white in Japanese is considered to be the reflected color of purity and clarity, and hence the many robes donned by the Shinto priests and the tools that they use are reflective of their sweat. For the Kumana Kodo shrines, the Nagi leaves are said to be the holiest plant and is a perfect way of offering to the Kami that resides in the shrine. Like all things in Japan, before we provide an offering to anyone, we want to ensure that the best side of the item is facing the receiver so that they can appreciate the appeal of the item that is given. This sort of mannerism takes place everywhere in Japan, from the shop clerks handling any cash and giving this to you with the notes facing you, to this tea ceremony where the bowl is turned three times before consumption to ensure that the best side of the bowl is facing you. What you're about to see is years of training to understand the way of Shintoism which forms the basis of co and cultural aspects of Japanese culture all compressed within two hours and then performing these without error in front of government officials. I have to admit, being here wearing the, the robes, there's something quite special about it that I can't really explain. But yet, I'm overwhelmed positively by the customs um, that is required to at least be 
um, in my position. This is a special moment, um, a very, very special moment, and something that, I'm, something that I'm definitely going to take away from this experience for a long, long time. It's easy to forget. Whenever you finish a bow or something, you come back. The code that we have to follow was actually quite intriguing, and everything is made to be as near perfect as possible, including the stances and the positioning of our hands. Having our hands positioned near our hips ensures that our bodies are wide open to express ourselves. I was actually very, very proud to hear that the shrine priest commented positively about my stance. The wooden item I'm holding in my hands is something you'll see when you visit Japan. It's something called a shaku. Traditionally, it held inscriptions for the priests to conduct their prayers and is used as a beacon to hone away bad luck and to maintain focus on the events. There are also three types of bowing, each bow appropriate to the intensity and the formality, which again is reflective of the mannerisms in everyday Japanese society. A standard 45 degree bow and the really formal 90 degree bow combined with the shaku position near a heart line to ensure that we express this move with flow. One thing that I think everyone would benefit, especially when they visit the shrines, is the positioning of our hands when we clap. Please take a careful inspection. Even positioning away or picking up a shaku had a three-step process. The next step in this process is the offering of gifts to the ami, or god in Japanese. Usually this gift is in the form of fruit, as fruits are often seen as gifts, rather than the form of food in the typical Japanese staple diet. As you can see, the tray is passed onto myself, above the mouth. This is particularly important as shrine priests want to maintain purity of such gifts, and as such, exhaling any breath onto the food will make it impure. So, Passing the fruits in this manner helps protect it from this. So, um, we've just gone through the practice um, of doing, of committing ourselves to the festival that's going on today. And um, all I can think about um, is not the complexity of the movements, but more so about putting my attitude forward, my best attitude forward. Um, sure, I think there might be a bit, a bit of mistakes that I'm going to commit, but like the shrine, like what the shrine headmaster said, I think it's all about making sure that you're putting your heart into the movement and understanding that everything comes with purpose. I think that's the most important part. So, yeah, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best. And without further ado, the following has taken place. I hope you enjoy. If you carefully watch our footsteps, everything has to be in sync as the flow and balance is maintained so greater awareness of our environment and careful attention to the person in front and remembering each step was in itself a challenge. Turning to take our seats has a method as well as we need to ensure that we maintain respect to the kami as well as our guests. So we have to turn in a particular manner in which we are always facing our guests. As I bask into the glory and historical significance of this shrine, I'm also quite astonished by the range of special guests from the Japanese government, including the various tourism agencies involved in making this happen.
When it got to this part of the ceremony, of passing the trays, I had to remember to make sure that my breath doesn't fall into the fruits. This, combined with how heavy this tray was, I am grateful that I did this with ease. Um, so the ceremony has just completed. Um, I am lost for words in terms of describing my actual emotions when it comes to the ceremony. Um, only because, yeah, like for my many close friends that know me, um, fortunately I've had a pass. I've, I've had a family um, pass away. A family member passed away two weeks ago. Um, so going through this experience and knowing that I'm praying for world peace, but also having her in the back of my mind, um, this amplified those feelings. But nonetheless, the feelings were quite positive. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely an opportunity um, that I'm going to take away from the rest of my life. Um, just knowing the fact that not many foreigners like myself have the opportunity to engage in this sort of activity, um, I'm actually very, very fortunate to be able to be selected, um, number one, and be able to um, pray for world peace and be able to represent at least the, the foreign community um, in opening up the doors for Japan. Um, yeah, in terms of my overall feelings, there's nothing I can't, there's, I can't explain it. It's, it's, been, it's been an overwhelming but positive experience. Thank you very much for your support and your continued patronage. I hope that this video not only showed you an insight as to the shrine mannerisms in Japan, but helped educate you, even at the tiniest bit, about the strict customs involved in this process. I hope to see you next time at the next episode, so stay tuned. My name is Marvin, and thank you very much for watching. Matane! うん、